it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, coming at you with another mechanical keyboard video from the delightfully named Royal Kluge. Now, the last time we checked out something from Royal Kluge, it was a few months ago, and it was their RK. 96 keyboard, which was a roughly full-size uh, keyboard aimed at a, we'll say, mainstream market, but a little more premium than, uh, you know, what I think RK is known for. Uh, RK, or Royal Kluge, made quite a name for itself in the ultra-budget keyboard space, uh, sort of that $50 and under bracket. Uh, but lately, they've been moving up market a little bit with some of their uh, fancier and, uh, uh, frankly, more appealing uh, offerings. And so that's what we're looking at here today. Now, this is not going to break the bank. It's still what I consider to be in that, you know, sub $100 value-oriented category, but the RK84 limited edition that we have here does pack a lot of value uh, into its uh, $80 price point. Uh, we've got uh, a 75% 84 key layout, of course, we no, have no numpad, but it retains all the rest of the functions you might want. Uh, it's got tri-mode wireless, so that wired the Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz mode. Uh, it's got USB pass-through, it's got hot swap sockets, it's got RK's own pre-lubed yellow linear switches, it's got dampening foam, uh, double shot ABS keycaps, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, so, uh, Really, it's a fairly similar spec list to the RK96, but shrunk down to this 75% form factor. So I'm expecting something pretty solid, but time will tell, time will tell. We're going to unbox this today. We're going to give it a sound test, of course. I will let you know how I feel about it after using it for a while. And, uh, we actually have two of these boards here today. We're going to unbox this one now. I'll show you the other one after, but the two colorways for the RK84 limited edition um, are named after coffee. In here, I believe we have the Macchia, or pardon me, the Americano black colorway. And then uh, they also sent over their Macchiato white version. So the box is pretty plain. We have the uh, typical RK orange and black coloration uh, with some glossy cardboard. We've seen this before, uh, again, on the RK96. We have a partial sort of stencil image of the board here. Tells us Royal Kluge keyboard. RK up here as well, but it doesn't actually tell us what the keyboard this is. Here we have RK Game Keyboard. On this end, Royal Kluge. On this end, Royal Kluge. Hey, did you guys know this was made by Royal Kluge? On the back, we have a full-sized stencil image of the board. Or not full-size, but complete. Um, a little bit of information about the manufacturer and such here. And then finally, when we get around to the spine of the box, we do have a little bit of information about what to expect in here. Royal Kluge RK84 RGB 2.4 gigahertz tri-mode K yellow switch. Hot swap. Some other stuff in there. Interestingly, does not tell us what colorway this is. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure 
This is the Americano Black version. So let's not spend more time dilly-dallying. Let's get into this thing. See what we have. The packaging is, of course, nothing special. It's adequate. I would say it's adequate. But the packaging is perhaps ultimately the least important part of the product. It could come in a brown cardboard box for all I care if the keyboard inside is phenomenal. So there we are. The RK84 in a soft plastic bag. Got a user manual on top, but it's inside the bag, so we'll take the board and put it aside for the moment. It has a respectable weight to it, a nice weight and density right off the bat. Not much else to see in here, just a glossy black uh, spot where the board sits. It's padded on all sides by just some air and cardboard. No foam in here, but you know what? That's great because it means it's all recyclable. So I appreciate that. And clearly it has arrived in good shape. We will have a handful of accessories here, no doubt. No doubt. The usual complement of items. Let's just pull them out here. Put them to the side. And get this box out of the way. So we have here a USB cable. To no one's surprise. Magnetic feet. A pair of magnetic feet. The 
is well magnetized to the underside of the keyboard and give you some extra height should you want it a little more of a typing angle um honestly kind of a weird choice uh you know many keyboards just have those feet that flip out on the bottom to increase the angle and really that seems a little more practical to me <laughs> given that you can lose these but you're not gonna lose the flip out feet on the bottom granted maybe these look a little nicer but functionally they're doing the same thing but they're just liable to being lost so i'm not quite sure what the advantage of these is but anyway for whatever reason rk decided to go with the magnetic attaching feet and finally we have a few spare switches a few spare switches these are rk's own yellow switches which are very similar Gatoron yellows, which are a very popular budget switch. They are, I believe, 45 gram actuation force, polycarbonate on the top and probably the bottom too. They are factory lubed, which at this price point is certainly a welcome addition, especially because lubricating your own switches is really time consuming. It's really time consuming, so it's nice to get something looped from the factory. And they sound pretty nice for what they are. They feel pretty stable, only a teensy bit of east-west wobble and maybe a tad more north-south wobble, but really not too bad. Of course, we have the uh, transparent polycarbonate on top a little gap here for the RGB to shine through. Uh, it is a five pin design so we have the extra little pins on the bottom here in addition to the central peg and the contacts here, contact pins. Um, some people claim that these extra little pins give the switches a bit more stability. Don't know if that's really true but it can't hurt anyway. And uh, yeah, let's give this a listen. Give it a listen here. It's a pleasing, uh, quiet switch. So you weren't really hearing the bottom out there so much, but here, let me bottom it out for you so you can hear that. Fairly clacky bottom out, and then an even clackier rebound. Listen. Uh, which I think will lend to a fairly clacky sound signature overall. Not a deep thock. Some people prefer the deep thock. Rather, a fairly bright and sprightly clack. But... Some people like that too. It's all a matter of personal preference. So, um, I think this is the same switch. I think it's the same one that we had on the RK96 that I checked out earlier in the year. Seem to remember it feeling and sounding a bit like this. Although those could have been RK's red switches, but they would have been very similar at any rate. Anyway, looking forward to trying those out on the board. And of course, uh, we get four of those, which is nice, just in case we ever need to replace a switch. RK furnishes us with the ability to do so. So, let's take a look at the keyboard now. It's time for the main event. So it comes in this plastic bag. the manual. We'll take a quick look at that, but it should be pretty straightforward. We have basic pack 
packaging contents on off information, how to pair it, backlight control, keyboard shortcuts for multimedia, and then multiple languages. Clearly an international package. Nothing too fancy, but it looks like it has what you need. All right, let's pull it out. All right, so here is the Royal Kluge RK84 in the Americano black colorway. As you can see, it's got this sort of dark theme going on for the alphanumeric keys, but then we've got these bright, just kind of off-white modifiers, and our accent keys are in this reddish brown. It's kind of reddish brown. And uh, overall, it kind of does give the impression of coffee, doesn't it? <laughs> right? You've got your black coffee beans, you've got your brown coffee after you pull a shot, then you've got your cream or your milk, or perhaps your uh, your froth, your crema on top. I uh, do enjoy uh, nice espresso, or Americano is actually usually what I drink, so this keyboard was made for me. I uh, make myself an Americano most days. Um, but we've got the uh, pretty typical 75% layout, not the exploded 75%, which you see quite often these days. This decides to keep it as compact as possible by taking the arrow keys and smooshing them right up into the bottom right corner here. We then have our nav cluster keys in this linear column. And then, of course, our F row along the top. So we get a little bit extra over what is 60% would give you. This, in my opinion, is one of the most functional designs. It retains, you know, 95% of uh, the functionality of a full-size keyboard. Uh, well, getting you a much smaller footprint on your desk for a more ergonomic uh, layout and setup. Uh, of note are three uh, modifier keys down here in the bottom right are smaller than the, the typical ANSI layout. Rather than being 1.25 keys wide, they are simply just one U one unit wide. Of course, our right shift is quite a bit shorter as well in order to accommodate our dedicated arrow keys. Other than that, a pretty standard layout, and the case itself is a pretty simple affair. It's a matte black, which of course complements the, the black coffee vibes we've got going on here. And, uh, Got some little bit of subtle Royal Kluge branding on the front there, but otherwise not much. You can see that the keyboard has an angle to it just by default. It's baked into the case, so you won't be able to get this thing flat, but it's a pretty mild angle, maybe four degrees, I'd say. The bottom part of the case is kind of undercut here. Where's the top part? Just kind of wraps around the back here. Not much to see along the back bezel. And really all the bezels are pretty narrow. Pretty narrow. Um, but they could be narrower. And in fact, that is a feature of this board. I believe... Let's actually just see. Let's give it a shot. I believe this frame is removable. Oh yeah. Totally. It comes off easily just pops right off, like so. So there you can see the frame on its own. It's uh, just ABS plastic, but it feels, you know, like reasonable quality. And uh, that actually gives us um, a uh, 
even narrower bezel should we want to do that. Of course it does change the look and feel of the board a bit because now we have the white plate, the positioning plate, exposed. So it looks a bit brighter than it does with the frame on. I think I prefer with the frame on because it just looks nice that way. But I suppose if you add the other color way, which we do, I'll show that to you in a shortly, uh, you could swap the frames on them if you wanted, I guess. Not too much else to see around here. We do have uh, our Type-C connection here as well as our USB hub, USB 2 pass-through, which is a really nice feature. Not so many boards have that these days, and I really wish more did. We have a couple of switches here to swap between Bluetooth mode and 2.4 GHz mode, as well as just generally turn wireless on or off. We have a sticker with some certifications and uh, labels and such. And we have a handy dandy little cubby for our USB receiver, which is RK branded. Really nice to see. We have multiple wireless keyboards. Hopefully that will help you from losing it and getting it mixed up with other uh, USB receivers. It's got a little magnetic uh, cubby there. The typical anti-slip feet on the bottom so it doesn't slide around. And naturally, we could put on these feet, these little riser feet. My stomach has uh, got things to say. These little riser feet, if we wanted, there's magnetize on just like that. Got to sit there. And that's that. So let's bring it back around to the front. Moving back around the front, I'd say it's time we took a look at the hot swap situation and the keycaps. So let's pull off the escape key here. So the limited editions here, these coffee themed ones, I believe they distinguish themselves by having these keycaps, which are double shot ABS plastic. So that means that uh, they have two pieces, two pieces of plastic fused together. And that's what creates the legends on the front. That means that they will never wear out because they're not printed on. They're literally another piece of plastic poking through uh, as well. They look nice and clean, don't they? Fairly sharp uh, and reasonably thick as well. Not the thickest keycaps I've ever seen, but not the thinnest by a long shot. Let's pull off another one here. see that double shot system at work once again, this time with Dark Legends light keycaps. Now the secondary function legends here printed on the side, those will not be double shot. Those will be just printed on. But the good news is your fingertips are not touching the sides of the keycaps and so they're not going to wire off on you. Can't imagine they would. So we have these RK yellow switches here and they pop out nice and easy like so. We already saw and heard the switch so don't have to look at that right now but we will take a look at the PCB socket and the dampening foam. So perhaps you can see there it's a black PCB with a white plate on top. It's a five pin socket, which of course allows us to uh, put in pretty much any switches we want. And we've got north facing RGB LEDs. There is no uh, padding in the socket, so it's not bottoming out on anything soft. Of course, if you wanted, you could put switch pads in there. It's just the 
bare PCB. But underneath, you might be able to see, it's kind of hard to tell, it's just kind of black, but underneath, I can see some foam. Uh, and also between the plate and the PCB, there's also some dampening of foam in there. Maybe you can hear it. Let's so poke at it there. So that should provide some sound dampening, some vibration dampening, help to control the sound signature and help the board feel more solid and uh, sturdy. A little bit more premium, one hopes. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the keycaps for their part, I didn't point this out, but they are standard OEM profile, which is the profile you are probably most familiar with, that everyone knows and loves. It's a you know, straight edged profile with gently scooped tops and uh, this uh, uh, tiered kind of uh, rows. Uh, pretty straightforward and pretty typical layout. But it looks sharp here. It looks nice and sharp. Overall, the effect is one of a very clean board. It's very clean. The keycaps, of course, are not shine through. So uh, the light that comes through the switches will mostly just diffuse out um, around the board between the switches rather than shining through the keycaps. So what else must we look at here? Uh, the stabilizers. The stabilizers. Always the Achilles heel. Or not always, but often the Achilles heel of more budget-oriented boards. Although, although these days manufacturers are paying more attention to making sure those stabilizers sound and feel better, even down in the budget range. A trend which I'm very happy to see. Hopefully, RK has picked up on that. I seem to recall that they sounded all right on the RK96, so let's see how this 94 sounds, or 84, pardon me. Uh, let's see if they've done a, a decent factory loop job. We'll start with the backspace. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they've done a, a great job. And no ticker rattle to be to be uh, spoken of there, really. It's a pretty hard bottom out. I don't think they're padding it, but the stabilizers feel very stable and they're not rattling. Let's hear the enter. Tiniest little bit of rattle, but really not bad. Just a little tick, but really pretty good. Hmm. Left shift. Let's see what we got. Once again, a firm bottom out, so you get that kind of slappy, clacky sound, but the stabilizers themselves are smooth and stable and not rattly. No tick. And last but not least, the hardest one to get right, always the space bar. So that leaves a bit to be desired, I would say. You can hear a bit of tick and squeak in there. Bit of rattle. The space bar is always a trick. It really, even on like expensive custom builds, it's really tough to get the space bar sounding good. This is, I would say, pretty average, maybe a little better than average. But it definitely has a clack to it, uh, a bit of a rattle. I would personally want to go in and spend a bit of time modding that. Uh, the good news is, I'm sure this board uses just your basic 
uh, plate mounted clip in stabilizers, which means which means it's very easy to get them out of there. All you gotta do is pop out the switch, pull the little levers on the stabs, rotate them out, and then you can pull them out and uh, mod to your heart's content. Whether they want to wholly mod them, whether they want to lube them up with a bit more lube, whether they want to band-aid mod to get that nice uh, padded bottom out sound, the world is your oyster. So, uh, that's good. That's nice. Uh, and you can see there is some lube on them. Well, maybe you can see. It's kind of hard to see with this lighting, but I can see some lube on the wire there. Not a lot, mind you, but enough, clearly, that uh, it does the job. At least on these keys. Really pretty good. It's just that space bar that needs a bit of work. All right, well, we've looked this thing over, uh, talked about it, uh, just in general, in hand. It feels pretty good. The materials feel of decent quality. Um, has no flex to it whatsoever. None. Actually quite stiff and sturdy. And it's got a nice weight to it because, of course, it has that dampening foam, but also a big old battery in there. I believe a 3700 milliamp hour battery. Uh, RK claims it's good for, I think, 20 hours with all the lights on full blast. Um, or a lot more with the lights off. <laughs> the RGB turned off, so... Speaking of RGB, this board, of course, does have RGB, and we're going to take a look at that next. We will talk about the RGB, the wireless functionality, check that stuff out before we finally get to the sound test. Let's get to it. Hold up. Just wait. <laughs> One second. I'm getting ahead of myself. I promised you that we would look at the other colorway. So I've got it unboxed here for you. This is the Macchiato White version. The Macchiato White version of the RK84 limited edition. You can see it looks the same, but different. <laughs> Let's uh, see if I can get both in frame here. Kind of, sort of. The Macchiato White colorway uh, has uh, white, of course, alphanumeric keys, these kind of grayish, uh, modifiers, and this kind of light brown, verging on almost orangey kind of, uh, accent colors here, which are reminiscent of coffee, I suppose. I, I guess, uh, this to me looks a bit more coffee than this, but both of them are appealing, and I will applaud RK for uh, some fairly reserved and elegant colorways here. We don't have a bunch of bright colors popping off. These look refined and mature and sharp. I think they look quite sharp. So um, the choice, of course, is yours if you were to pick one of these up between the darker Americano or the lighter Macchiato colorway. But uh, each one is, is nicely internally color matched and I kind of enjoy the coffee vibe, the coffee inspiration. But uh, aside from the, the different colors, they are, you know, identical, of course. It's the same keyboard. Backspace is a little louder on that one. So is Enter, actually. Space bar is equally loud on both. I would say, for whatever reason, the Americano version is actually a little more dampened. A little more subtle with the stabilized keys, but that's probably just normal variance in how they ship from the factory. Gives you a bit of an idea, though, that there can be some variation between units. All right, now it's time to take a look at that RGB. And here we have the Royal Kluge RK84 Limited Edition.
old-fashioned Americano colorway on my desk, looking pretty sharp, really. I, I think it looks pretty nice. It's, it's an elegant look, to be sure. And I do have my video lights on right now, which means you probably can't see the RGB very well. It is on right now, but it's a fairly dim RGB, uh, one of the dimmest I've seen in a while. Uh, so with uh, the bright lights on, uh, you can probably barely make it out. We will turn the studio lights off in a moment so you can see it much better. But I wanted to have the lights on uh, initially uh, so that we can go through some of the uh, secondary function layer options and wireless options. So I've tested it out in both the wired mode and the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, which we see right here, right now, seems to work well. I haven't had any issues with drop signals or interference or anything of that sort. Granted, I have simply been using it here on my desk. I haven't taken it across the room or anything like that, but for most use cases, it's probably fine. It does, however, have Bluetooth as well, and that I have not tried yet. So let's see about pairing it right now. Uh, to enter Bluetooth mode, we simply flip it over, and on the back, we saw this earlier, we have a couple of switches. This is the on-off switch for wireless, and then we also have the, uh, just making sure that you can see this, uh, the Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz toggle switch here. So we're going to flip that over to B for Bluetooth. We're going to bring this back, and uh, our Q here is rapidly flashing. Um, which I think actually means it's in pairing mode by default. So we could uh, try the slot 2 or slot 3, but it looks like uh, it's doing slot 1 by default. So let's just go here, add Bluetooth device, see if it's listed. There it is, RK84 RGB. We have the choice of Bluetooth 3 or Bluetooth 5. We'll use Bluetooth 5 because I believe it is lower latency. Uh, on first click, it said try your device again. On second click, it paired. Seems to be good. Let me just open up Notepad, just make sure. And indeed, it is. So, didn't work first try, but second try, and it didn't uh, complain too much. So, good enough. Good enough for me. Seems to work okay. Um, of course, uh, if you're doing any gaming wirelessly, you ought to use the 2.4 gigahertz receiver rather than the Bluetooth, because Bluetooth is always going to be a higher latency option. But if you're just doing basic, you know, productivity and typing and stuff, uh, where immediate response is not so critical, then the Bluetooth will do just fine, and it will use much less power than the 2.4 gigahertz mode, so get you much more battery life out of this thing. Of course, the best connection is always going to be the wired connection if you need the best possible performance, but you have your choice. So let's flip this back to the G mode, that 2.4 gigahertz mode, and it looks like instantaneously it has reconnected. Just wanted to make sure that it is reasonably centered on the camera there in your field of view. So uh, that's the wireless situation. Seems to work just fine. We also have Windows and Mac toggles holding function and pressing A sets Windows mode. Function S sets Mac mode. We are of course here on Windows, so we'll keep it on Windows mode. We have a handful of other controls as well. We have most of our basic keys, but if you want insert, scroll lock, these sorts of things, they're on a secondary function layer under print screen and pause. We also have, of course, all our media controls up here under the F row. 
uh, and everything is nicely indicated with a secondary legend, including the RGB backlighting. So now would probably be the time for me to turn off the lights and we will take a look at the RGB. And suddenly things are dark, including the keyboard itself. Uh, we have no uh, edge lighting, so it's not spilling any light out onto the desk. And uh, the backlighting is, as I mentioned earlier, pretty dim as far as these things go. Now here, in person, it certainly looks good enough. There's nice color, but it's not really shining bright. This may or may not be an issue for you, depending on how bright you like your RGB. It does have brightness adjustments, function up, makes it brighter. Although, as you can see, the keyboard flashing like that indicates that it's already at its maximum brightness. We could make it dimmer, although I wouldn't recommend it because it gets very dim indeed. It looks like we have off and one, two, three, four, four total brightness steps plus off for five. So again, if you like really bright RGB, this might not be the board for you. But I will say it does look appealing. The colors are saturated. The gradients are smooth. There's no visible flickering. If you are seeing a little bit of flickering on the camera, that's totally normal. It's not visible in person, not visible IRL. It's simply the result of a, an interaction, an artifact of the uh, frequency of the LEDs and the shutter speed on the camera. I will say though that looking in the viewfinder, I don't see much in the way of flicker. So hopefully it's not very visible to you uh, or perhaps not present. And that is a good thing for people who might have this keyboard on camera. If you're a YouTuber or streamer and plan to have your keyboard in frame, it's important to have one that's not going to be a flickery mess on camera. So we have the standard complement of RGB controls. Like I said, we have brightness control. We also have speed control. Our default RGB mode is this RGB wave. If we uh, go function left, there we go. That's probably the slowest that it can get, which is very calming. I like keeping my keyboard effects on nice, slow fades, but we can ramp it up. Looks like we have four steps of that as well. This is maximum speed, which is honestly still a fairly leisurely pace. None of it feels frantic, but we'll keep it nice and slow for the ASMRness of it all. Um, also, function end will cycle through different colors for each pattern. So this is still, of course, the horizontal wave, but now we can go through individual colors. And I reckon we probably have about eight of those before we get back to the rainbow. I did not count, but that felt like about eight, seven or eight maybe. So good to have some options. And then of course we have a bunch of different kinds of RGB lighting effects. So let's start with uh, whatever's next. Because what else could we start with? <laughs> so this is a, a slow wave from wherever you press. I actually really like how chilled out that ripple effect is. And then the slow fade out. Oh, that's pretty nice. This appears to be kind of the pinwheel. A nice slow pinwheel because we do have it on the lowest speed. A sine wave, which isn't the smoothest, looks a little chunky, but there it is. A vertical scroll, top to bottom. I do not think there's a way to change the direction of the effects, at least not uh, in hardware here. Perhaps, perhaps with RK software you could do so, but not in hardware. Okay, kind of a raindrops effect. Uh, the circular ripple 
rippling out from the center, which looks very chilled, very nice. Okay, this is kind of bouncing. Uh, or wait, that was it, coming in from the sides, and then it explodes. Yeah, we've seen that before. Or I have, at least. Okay, this looks like it's kind of going around, spiraling into the center. Again, very slowly. That is what I told it to do. And then is it going to blow up? There it goes. Okay, sure. Coming in from each side, bouncing back and forth. We've got a lot that are actually coming into the middle here and then exploding. I feel like it's giving me the same one and again and again. <laughs> okay, now these are sort of stripes back and forth. And a diagonal wave. Bounces back. Okay, and this appears to just be off. It's not a reactive mode, it's simply off. And then we have... What is this? <laughs> I'm having a hard time telling what's happening here. It's like doing something on a row-by-row -row basis, sort of interleaved. And this is just sort of gently fading in and out of different colors on each key. I think this might be a static mode. We do this. Yep. So it's just a single color static mode or static rainbow. Uh, if you have it on rainbow mode. Okay, this is some kind of breathing. Yeah, it's a breathing mode. And this is a single color breathing very slowly. Or it's fading through colors, I guess, is what it's doing. But that's nice. Another reactive mode, where the keys we press light up. Another reactive mode, where it goes in rows. And we're back to our original wave. So that was quite a few, maybe like 15 or 20 even effects. It's always nice to see, it gives you options, personally. I'm all about that slow wave, very zen. All right, so we've talked about and witnessed the wireless in action, both the 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth mode. We talked about some of the other secondary function layer options, and we've witnessed all the RGB this thing has to offer, which is visually pleasing, if not terribly bright. So, now it's time for the typing test. We gotta hear this thing. Let's do a sound test and see, or hear, <laughs> how it sounds.
right. Well, we've had our chance to unbox this thing, check it out from every angle, uh, see the RGB and the wireless modes in action, and of course, give it a sound test. What do you think about it? I'd love to hear down in the comments. Personally, uh, my experience with it has been good. Uh, I'd say not exceptional or standout, really, but good. Uh, I really have nothing to complain about with this board, or only very, very small things, if, uh, if anything. And that's a fairly similar conclusion to what I arrived at for the RK96 limited edition, which uh, I reviewed earlier this year. The RK84 Lily is a perfectly cromulent keyboard. It does everything you need it to do, it, and some probably. It does it at a reasonable price point, and it looks and sounds pretty good while it does it. Uh, in terms of the acoustics, personally, I think it's uh, got a bit of a sharper sound signature than I personally usually go for. Definitely has a fair bit of clack. That is in due part, uh, partly to the switch, RK's yellow switch that they have is a very smooth switch. It feels nice, but it has a fairly loud, clacky bottom and uh, bottom out and um, rebound sound as well. So that lends to that sound signature, as does the construction of the board itself. While it does have dampening foam, which I think contributes to a feeling of solidity and quality, it also lacks a gasket mount or any sort of fancy sound dampening of that sort. There's no silicone dampening, no gaskets, and the plate is just aluminum, I believe. Uh, it's not polycarbonate or FR4 or anything of that sort, so it has no flex no sound absorption to speak of, it is a fairly hard, clacky bottom out. But for people who like that clack, who want a very firm bottom out and a nice snappy, clacky typing sound and feel, well, RK has that for you. And I will stress once again that typing sound, typing feel are all totally subjective. One person might like something, a deep, thocky, very soft sound. Another person might find that way too mushy and quiet. So if you don't mind something a bit louder and you like that firm bottom out feel and click clack, then this could be an excellent budget option for you. Uh, similarly, if you like the colorway, then I have no objections to what RK has done here. I think that the coffee theme is kind of fun. Personally, I'm a fan of coffee, and I think that the macchiato white and Americano black colorways that we've seen here today look very sharp, quite elegant. I would say they look a cut above your average budget-minded keyboard. And that is, of course, why these are the limited edition versions of the RK84. There is the standard editions, which come with regular shine-through keycaps and cost about $10 or $20 less than this LE version does. But for my money and my aesthetic preferences, I would go for the LE options. That said, if you want shine-through keycaps, then save yourself some money, get the standard editions. A few other niceties on this board, of course, the 75% layout is extremely functional, ergonomically friendly, space efficient. It's one of the best layouts available, in my opinion, from a uh, space efficiency and uh, optimization standpoint while maintaining all the functionality that you need at your fingertips. So pleasing in that sense. As long as you don't need a numpad, this is a strong option. Additionally, we have the tri-mode wireless with the Bluetooth, which can pair to not just your PC, but also your phone, your tablet, what have you. We have Windows and Mac modes available as well. And we have that 2.4 gigahertz receiver for higher performance wireless when you have a USB port 
available. Speaking of USB ports, this uh, keyboard also has that USB hub on the back right up here. We have a pair of USB type A ports that are pass throughs. They will allow you to plug in, uh, you know, a USB drive or whatever. You could even plug in your mouse uh, or a wireless receiver for your mouse there if you wanted to do so. That's a nice feature. It's certainly not a guarantee on uh, keyboards at this price point. Um, in fact, many keyboards just opt not to, uh, to have a USB hub at all. So I'm a fan of that here. And uh, finally, I must give a shout out to uh, uh, RK's uh, stabilizers here. Uh, from an acoustic perspective, they did a nice job with their stabs, especially the backspace, enter, and left shift. The space bar does leave something to be desired, but once again, because it's got the really easy to uh, mod, you know, plate mounted clip in stabilizers, you could do that yourself, no problem. And the hot swap sockets make it very straightforward. If you want to mod your stabs or indeed switch out all of the switches on the keyboard, you could very easily do that. Um, final feature I'm going to call out. I'm just going through a big list of things here. A final feature that I like, the removable case uh, or the removable frame, I should say. It's a small thing and I don't think most, most people will take advantage of it, but it's just nice to have that flexibility. It's a thoughtful design element that RK has incorporated. So it's a lot of talking, but you're probably getting the impression that, as I said already, this is a solid keyboard at its price point, coming in around 80 US dollars, although frequently on sale as well, it seems, through RK's website and on Amazon. And just for you, I have a 10% discount code that you can use on RK's website or Amazon, whatever your preference. You can find the links and the discount codes down below in the video description, down, down, below, below, down there. Um, so you can save yourself another, you know, eight bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. Um, and really take advantage of the value proposition this keyboard offers. A decent performer, got all the features you might want, and a really sharp looker at its price point. So, a big thank you to Royal Kluge RK for sending over the pair of keyboards we looked at here today. Once again, those are the RK84 limited editions in macchiato white and americano black. I appreciate RK sending those over and sponsoring this video. And a big thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it informative. But most of all, I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now, my dear friends. Oh, hi there. It's End of Video Nick. And End of Video Nick is also Sick Nick, unfortunately. I am down with the sickness. I got COVID after three and a half years, finally got hit. And uh, so I'm going to make this real quick. I'm going to get right to the point because we've got some patrons that need thanking and YouTube members, some supporters that need thanking. And the show must go on. So without further ado, our Foos Row Da tier supporters for this video are Ragnar Ragnarsson, Drummer Brit, Jake Lofney, Odin Sun, Rango Steel, Angel Garcia, and K Time. I appreciate these individuals so, so very much for kindly supporting what I do here 
on the YouTube channel, yeah, along with all of the patrons and YouTube members that you see here. They're all top tier people, and I appreciate their support a ton. And you, dear viewer or listener, if you are interested in joining their ranks and getting some fun perks while you're at it, please consider checking out the links down below near the top of the video description to my Patreon and my YouTube memberships. You can find those perks and you can find a tier that is right for you. Once again, a big, big old thank you to our wonderful channel supporters. <laughs>